Hi, I'm uh, John Wilworth. I'm the safety director for JL Davidson Company. We are a uh, reinforcing steel contractor. Uh, we subcontract to many uh, larger general contractors here in Southern California, from Ventura all the way down to uh, uh, south end of San Diego. The issues that I want to talk about today and, and that we're going to do some testing for primarily involve around fall protection, uh, impalement protection, excuse me, and the letters of clarification or interpretation that we have regarding uh, the use of what's sometimes called J-hooks, what, what we typically refer to as a 180 degree bend or standard hook, and the clarification as to whether these hooks are indeed impalement protection. Currently, there is a letter of clarification out that states that the J-hook is impalement protection at grade. Uh, I've questioned that, and some of the testing we're going to do here today will uh, confirm or deny those facts. Uh, we'll go beyond the fact of whether it is impalement protection at grade uh, and explore whether it's impalement protection above grade. The test criteria that we'll follow will be that from Title 8, Section uh, 344, wherein uh, essentially we'll be dropping a 200-pound sandbag. Uh, granted, the test criteria is 250 pounds, but uh, the bags that we're able to acquire for this testing will not handle that much weight, so we're going to go to the 200-pound and, and stay consistent with that. We will be dropping these bags from a seven and a half foot elevation, which is equivalent to the at grade, and we'll be dropping them from a 10 foot elevation, which is the equivalent for a uh, for above grade. Uh, beyond the J hooks, we're going to look at the form stakes that contractors, uh, carpenters typically use as form stakes, uh, grade stakes, or template stakes. I've been told by a couple of sources that these stakes are not considered to be impalement hazards because of the shape. But again, we'll be dropping sandbags on these uh, form stakes or grade stakes to find out if they do, they do cause impalement. Anchor bolts is another thing that uh, I've been looking at and concerned about. Uh, so we'll be dropping the sandbags onto some anchor bolts as well. Electrical conduits, uh, the EMT conduit is another issue that's been brought before us that uh, we're going to be experimenting with. And finally, some contractors are attempting to use Schedule 40 PVC pipe, three inches in diameter, and calling that uh, an impalement hazard over a row of uh, rebar or other similar hazards. And we'll be dropping uh, test bags onto that conduit as well, for that PVC conduit. And see what it's going to be our measuring device. It's a 10 foot long piece of EMT. We're showing you the distance with a tape measure. We're going to be working at 10 foot. All right, this is our test bag. We have uh, SAM that's less than 10% moisture content, rigged to a forklift using a nylon product and a quick release device. The test procedure is basically going to consist of raising this unit 10 feet off the ground, using the measuring stick that you saw earlier, placing it over the uh, sample to be tested. At that time, the torque will be secured in place. No one will stand underneath the load, and the rope will be pulled to the release, release, and the sandbag will drop on the sample, and we will see what the results are. These are the samples we're going to test. We've got several varying things that we find on the job site. John, why don't you explain uh, these three items here and what your thought process was for these and why we want to test these items. Okay, what, what I have going here, what my concern is that I have seen letters uh, of interpretation or clarity stating that a, a day hook or 180 degree bend is acceptable as a family protection at grade. And our purpose here is to see if indeed that is true. Uh, what we have here, one of the letters states that a bar with a 90 degree bend on it and a standard hook is not acceptable because it still leaves the potential for impalement if a person were to fall against it in this way. I've gone ahead and I want to do the testing anyway because I would like to see what the results are if the uh, test bag dropped on these 
uh, right angles what happens as far as palement is concerned from a vertical level. Okay, so this is a 90 degree bend with what number of rebar? This is number four bar, which is considered the standard hook for number four. This is sample number one. In all the samples, they're arranged in a manner so that we have a group of three bars together that would represent a wall or a continuous run of reinforcing steel with the right angles of hooks or whatever the condition is, and then a single bar by itself. The purpose here or intent is to drop the bag over the group, see what would happen in that condition, and then also to drop the uh, test bag over an individual bar to see what the results are. Okay, that's sample number one. Sample number two is this device right here. John, explain what this is. The part of the matter, the matter in, uh... Sample number two, we've got uh, number six reinforcing steel with the standard hook. Uh, Mike, you should probably just get your tape measure. We'll see what the distance is across this radius. It's approximately five to six inches, but we can get an accurate measurement on that. And again, it's the same basic principle. If we had a continuous roll bar, we've got six, six inches out, out on the number six bar. The same basic idea is going on here. This is sample number three. John, uh, I explain what this is. Uh, sample number three is the same uh, basic principle. It's a number five in person steel. And uh, the standard hook dimension on that is approximately five and a half inches. So these are the conditions that you see out on the job site. Number fours, number fives, and number sixes as they relate to a standard hook with okay. 185 feet down. So number five is sample number three. Okay. Sample number four is your standard um, form state. John, why don't you explain? Uh, your principles of that, what we're going to do with those. My concern with the grade stakes or form stakes is that they are not necessarily or perhaps I should say not consistently recognized as impalement hazard. Some people view them as strictly a tripping hazard. Uh, my concern is that they are indeed an impalement hazard. So we will be driving these stakes into the ground uh, depending on what we can get in the depth of the soil. I'd like to see about a uh, a 10 inch protrusion from the soil on the grade state. We'll drop the test bags accordingly and uh, see what the results are. Okay, these grade stakes set for number four, uh, two and a half by uh, three eighths inches in width. This is sample number four. Sample number five, John, can you explain the sample number five is? Sample number five is a similar situation as far as recognizing things as a failing hazard. We will be dropping the bag onto these anchor bolts that are made for 5 eighths of an inch diameter. And we will see whether or not they are available as they should be protected. Uh, they're, they're about a 6 and 3 quarter inch uh, protrusion above this bolt. And they're, how, what's the diameter on these bolts? These are 5 eighths diameter bolts. 5 eighths diameter bolts. This is sample number 5. Sample number 6. Consist of a piece of uh, PMT, uh, which is used for electrical uh, lines. It's three quarter inch diameter, it's just scheduled uh, 80 stuff. It works real well, it's very common in the trades. I got this piece from a local electrical contractor, which tells me this is the most common stuff they use. We'll have it protrude at least 10 inches out of the ground so that it can do a contact on this. This is sample number six. I think the one of our concerns with this is quite often we will see this EMT conduit used as a uh, standard or yeah. post for or barricade tapes and things caution like that. Tapes. Caution uh, tape. First, and our concern is, is this an impalement hazard? Because we run into this issue a lot too. Yeah. These are the most common types of items that we see on a job site. Conduit, the bowl, the rebar, st or the uh, grade stakes, and then of course the rebar bends. We try to pick a good cross section of um, things that we typically see on a job from our experience, so we'll test those items. Calibrate the bathroom scale here. I've got a known weight of 50 pounds, a known net weight of 50 pounds of welding rod. Uh, go ahead and place the weight and adjust the scale so that I have an accurate 50 pound reading. Okay, I'm right at 50 pounds on the scale, and we will set the uh, sandbag onto the scale next. To verify the weight of the sandbag that we're using. Weight is 206 pounds even. 
The board weighs five pounds, therefore the sandbag and the rigging weighs 201 pounds for our testing today. Go ahead and drop the bag directly onto the sheet of plywood just to show that the bag has enough strength so that it doesn't explode when it's dropped from the 10 foot elevation. So our first drop this morning will be to drop the bag directly onto this uh, piece of plywood we're setting on this hard surface. It will be dropped from an elevation of 10 feet. Uh, again, just to show that the bag has the strength to not explode on impact. After the initial control lift, uh, we found that the bag split open. The standard says that you've got to use a reinforced bag. So we'll double bag this with a, a second plastic bag and this should not noticeably affect the, the overall weight of the, the test dot. Okay, in the first test we'll demonstrate how we're using the 10 foot pole to measure the, the height of the load above the ground. And, clear. and again, this is uh, sample number two. The, the J bed is right here where my fingers point, where my knife point. It came right through the sandbag and split it open. Um, I'm going to cut this back just to see it. See how penetrated through all that sand. Bag. Here with the sample having been dropped at 10 feet, that the letter of clarification or interpretation that we have that states that a J hook or 180 degree bend is not good above grade is correct. Uh, obviously, when this 200 pound bag was dropped from 10 feet, uh, it did not. The J hook did not prevent impalement. So. Uh, I guess our next test will be to do the same thing from seven and a half feet to see if it does provide protection. No at, even though this harness, part of the harness took the impact, uh, the strap of the harness is, is over the top of the J-hook, which may uh, spread the load out a little more. Yeah. Sample number two. Same procedure is used. We've uh, reloaded a new sandbag because the first one split open. It's been weighed at 200 pounds, and we're elevating the, the bag, the load, 10 feet above the ground. This is the impalement. You can see as I pull this out, that obviously these 5 8 inch anchor, or 6 inch long, uh, anchor bolts are definite impalement hazards, so if anybody says you know, they're wrong, and these should be definitely capped or covered in some way. As I pull this out, you can just see, we didn't have any blunt trauma. This thing just penetrated a nice two, I would say a good two inches with my fingers like that. In this test, we're using a 198 pound load. We're suspending it seven and one half feet above the ground elevation and we're dropping it on sample number four, which is the form stake. The form stake has an 11 inch vertical protrusion above the ground. Again, it appears that we have an impalement. We'll take a look closer. For the form stake, what we think happened is when the thing fell on it, it went into it. And John's trying to pull it back, trying to pull it back. This resistance, did you agree? Yes. Oh, there it is. Right there. See it? It's close up. It impaled right here. Obviously, this is, a, this is 11 inches long when it came through, so it went right through it. So I would think that the form sake would be a impalement head. You? It certainly appears to be Based on this test, it's an impalement head. Well, John! Here we have John installing the rebar cap, which is normally designed for uh, round rebar, but he's putting it on the flat bar piece. Uh, we've retaped the bag, 
after it was punctured with the form stake and installed the rebar cap on the form stake and you can see we're measuring that at seven and one half feet that's measured from the the, uh, the rebar cap, the protective cap elevation. We know that if it fails at seven and a half feet, then it will also fail at ten feet. Hey, what happened here was this, the sandbag dropped from seven and a half feet. You couldn't see it from your angle from the other side, but when it dropped, it slammed into the cap didn't penetrate it, then it popped it, then it fell over. So this was a blood trauma injury. It, it went boom and fell over. Yeah, look at the, the, form, the, yeah, look at the form of the cap. I mean, the cap didn't fail, obviously it didn't penetrate it. It just did a blunt trauma versus impalement here. So the cap did work. We're conducting the same test with the... Uh, with the rebar protective cap, the impalement cap but we've suspended the load now at 10 feet. Uh, 200 pound bag of sand on a rebar cap uh, form stake. Obviously did the same thing it did at seven and a half feet. Blunt trauma, bounced off, split the bag open. Um, so you wouldn't get impaled on the cap like this, but what would happen is you'd have some blunt trauma. Series. This is now sample number three which is a number five rebar bent in the form of a J. And we're gonna test this at seven and one half feet. When this bag was put together, it was measured at 196 pounds. Well, we'll see if we can get 10 feet. May have to do it at seven and a half. But this is a three-quarter inch Schedule 40 conduit galvanized steel. Uh, close enough for government work. It was uh, just a little bit shy of 10 feet. This is a three-quarter inch piece of EMT I got from an electrical contractor. We just dropped a 200 pound bag of sand from 10 feet on it. It went through like a like a knight and like a needle. It went straight through the bag. As a matter of fact, you see this little piece right here that it cut out? It acted as a cookie cutter and it cuts this section out when it went through the bag. Nice clean cookie cutter. John, come take a look at this real quick. John, come here a minute. Look at this. Look how it pierces. How else do you do cookie cutter? <laughs> test we're taking uh, a load that's approximately 200 pounds. Three pieces of a number four rebar have been pounded into the ground with six inches protruding and a piece of three inch PVC schedule 40 has been uh, slotted and laid over to simulate a trough. This is a common field practice. They're measuring to make sure that this is suspended 10 feet over the top of the trough. And we'll be doing the drop test shortly.